So today behind me is a little bit of a special day because we're gonna be making some progress on the development of this studio. And you see the two monitors here, hopefully we're gonna be wall mounting these today because I've got the right height. I was using these uh, Corsair boxes on a power supply and cooler. And that was mainly just because I wanted to try before I buy kind of thing. And I recommend doing the same. If you guys are using monitors, make sure they're the right height. Otherwise you'll be getting headaches like all the time if your monitor's too low and you're looking down all the time. So want to get the right height and I think we have, that is the perfect height at the moment away from the desk. So it goes to show that usually monitor stands are not high enough, but let's get back to it. So this desk here behind me is gonna get cleaned off because we've actually got to treat the wood as well. This wood here is untreated, so we're gonna treat it with some polyurethane. And we're also gonna be mounting some floating shelves up the top here to sort of fill out these walls. And also behind me here is the streaming desk, which I'll talk a little bit about later as well. There's still a few little decorations that have to go up here. And we're also still waiting on some products to come through for that before we can finish it off and also start streaming for you guys. But with all that aside, let's start building this city up. So now here we've cleared out all these uh, desks here and we've got the shelves ready. So this first shelf is gonna come about uh, 90 mil, a uh, 900 mil, sorry. I get all my things confused here, but it's gonna come 900 mil off. That's gonna be the one that's going 1.2 meters uh, horizontally. And then up in the corner there, we're gonna put a 900 and also another 900 on this side. That gives us options as well to put two 600s uh, above later on to sort of make it a little bit more sophisticated and then on this side we're gonna mount two and we're still gonna figure out how we're gonna do this but we're gonna do this wall first then we're gonna figure out how to do this one because of this window uh, seal here it does make it difficult to mount these floating shelves basically with their pre-installed brackets not running the span of the window So we just got the first uh, floating shelf installed. It's actually pretty easy and it is looking prestino. So there is the shelving there. Instead of going over the window, we decided what if we just stack the shelving like that and it actually turned out really good. So there's the floating shelves now and uh, that is stage one done. So we're gonna get the monitor arms now mounted over here, the wall mount monitor arms. And then we're gonna try and install the sound tiles because we kind of want to get all this done in one go because we're gonna be uh, actually putting some sealant on this wood too to protect that. So yeah. All right, so we finally have the monitors mounted to the wall and that was a big pain in the ass because we had to get the top flush 
and so basically these monitors aren't height adjustable these monitor stands so we had to drill holes in the vase mount at the second one to get it flush at the top otherwise yeah it would just wasn't flush and it was sending me ocd uh the speaker on the bottom there we've got that mounted so now we just got to do a bit of cable management but we're going to use the sound tiles now to raise them just above this uh the sockets here and that'll be able to cover like the cables going to the computer so you won't actually see any cables and of course it'll give the benefit of giving a sound uh deadening as well in the studio and we've also decided to add a 60 mil uh shelf up the top there so i gave that a nickname as well so yeah now it's time finally to sand back this table and then give it a protective coating So we just finished cleaning up the desks and there's all the alcohol wipes. Man, I didn't realize there was that much dirt that came off. I mean, keep in mind we did sand it back, but we used the alcohol wipes and they just dry so quickly. So it's pretty much ready now for the coat of polyurethane. So wipe on poly, we're ready to go. There it is, that's the final stage of clearing off this wood and making it look awesome, but also giving it a protective layer so it doesn't get stained. Have to give this at least 12 hours. They do recommend 24, but Australia's a pretty dry country, so we should get away uh, after I wake up from sleeping. Should be almost done. So now we've got everything going on here and the shelves are all up. And also I'm just gonna go hit up the gym. I know it's like uh, 10.30 at night, but Still got to keep that health up. Got to keep on that grind. So, I don't know. Should I take the camera to the gym? Maybe. Might, there might be no one there. So, let's do a workout. So we just got back from the gym and it's close to midnight now and I'm really tired but health is something that I don't really talk about here on the channel and actually a lot of tech tubers don't really talk about health but it's something that's so important to stay on top of your game. You know, uh, I go to the gym like two, three times a week and I've been doing that for over a year now and I feel great and I'm not going to stop doing that because you sleep more efficiently, you just got more energy, it just gives you that energy to win. But if you guys want, I can go through the full yes man regimen, the diet, the exercises, uh, the time I spend on computers and how I spend most of my day doing this YouTube gig and still remaining on top of that game brothers so if you guys want to see that let me know in the comment section and I'll make it happen but I'm gonna crash out now and we'll get back into the studio in the morning so it's now the morning after and I'm ready to start doing some cable management and I've also got to go out and pick up a few things like a three meter display port cable for that monitor over there uh, a few other cables, maybe some extension leads as well. And uh, yeah, just start really cleaning up this cable management and making the rig look tidy. Maybe even put a hole in the desk for the keyboard. So we just got back now and all the goodies here. We've got 25 centimeter cat cables. That's for the wall from the uh, switch to the wall. And then we got some little pins here. This is to stick into the walls, the decorations that are going up there, and we'll do that really soon. And same here with that. And we've also got a spirit level included. So that was only $2.50, so that was a pretty good deal. Double-sided tape for the sound tiles. We've already cardboard attached them to the actual tiles themselves. Earmuffs for when I'm doing the uh, using the data vac because for some reason it just hurts my ears and I get a little bit of tinnitus after it. So dad man approved. He always loves using earmuffs, so... He actually recommended I get them. So, and then we've got here cable management as well. Heap of different stuff for cable management. So we've still got a lot of things to do here, but it's gonna come along nicely, I think.
So here's the wall here, it's all complete. And I mean, who needs a level when you can just eyeball it? <laughs> Maybe I should have used the level, but it looks pretty straight to me. So uh, we've got up the top right hand corner here, the motherboard. Now that motherboard's iconic because that was the first like motherboard that began the whole use PC parts hustle thing. Uh, it was actually broken, but it came with a Q9550 uh, Intel quad core duo. And so I was just, I was stoked when I got that CPU. Uh, $20. So it was in the $40 PC parts vlog. And then below that, we've got the play button there. And then we've got two graphics cards. One's NVIDIA and the other's an AMD card. So I was thinking about painting it red and green, but you know, opposite colors. But I was like, nah, because it actually goes really well with the wall. So also cut myself as well while I was um, installing that motherboard. It's the hole puncher slipped, my finger slipped and then hit those little pins. Does hurt a bit, but that's not gonna stop us from getting all this done now. So there it is, the sound tiles are all in and they're covering up those monitor cables as well, both the power and the uh, display cables. So we've got the servers there as well. I got the 25 centimeter cables there just looking really clean. We're gonna do cable management in a second and clean this up, but uh, we've still got a few more sound tiles to do. There's another three sound tiles. So we literally have the perfect amount just there. I just gotta go down and get some double-sided tape, but I do wanna set up my computer quickly and just sort of piece things out in case I need to get some other stuff as well while I'm out. So now we've completed the first stage of the Tech Yes setup. And this now is the benchmark setup. I was going to start looking at this and sort of prepping it, but this monitor here actually doesn't have a vase uh, mount stand on the back. I believe it does come with like an adaptable kit, but it's a lot of trouble. So not to worry, Azus sent over. <laughs> their XG35V. So unexpectedly, I just had both these ultra wides here and I thought I would compare them. One is 34 inches, the other is 35 inches. And so the ASUS does have an extra 20 mil on the bottom, so it does have 20 mil more uh, height. And then on the horizontal, it does have uh, 830 mil versus 805. So it is a little bit bigger that 35 inch is definitely giving you just that little bit more viewing area. So when I do the review on that, I will be giving it a little bit of a comparison versus Samsung, because that is a very popular ultra wide monitor. And we'll see how this fares. And I've still actually got to review the ViewSonic as well. So I don't know what it is. This month must be the month of the monitor. So now here's the stream setup. I'll take you guys through a little bit of a tour. There are still some little final touches I have to do. For instance, I do have to get a micro HDMI adapter for my Panasonic G7. I'm also waiting in the mail 
on an AC adapter for it too. So once that comes through, I'll be able to actually stream from that camera, give you guys DSLR quality in a live stream. But here's a look, little look at the setup, what it's gonna be like. So I'm gonna be sitting from this angle point of view, gonna have the stream deck there, gonna have the keyboard mouse here, two monitors as well, be able to see the live chat and the feed and the news. And then also that monitor there will be the subject monitor too. And then that'll be the webcam, the hidden webcam for the subject. So whoever I'm talking to can see me. Uh, I'm still waiting also on a mic uh, cable, XLR cable. So that can connect down to the bottom here where all the magic is happening. I am a little bit worried about this mini ITX PC. I mean, it is uh, powering everything off a 100 watt power supply. So many USB devices, six core 8400, 32 gigabytes of RAM. I hope it can hold up. But we'll give it a shot we'll test it out and give it a chance because it would be epic to just have that travel pc actually pulling weight and doing something else around the channel so there it is guys that's the streaming setup let me know what you think of it so here we are now at the end of day two and i'm absolutely bugging i'm actually ready to go to bed but behind me is the tech yes setup phase one it's complete that's my main editing rig got the two wall mounted monitors they're cracking in the background i'm absolutely in love with this setup i've just visioned it and it's gone the way I planned it to go. Uh, got all the cable management done and that was pretty easy to do because we hit a lot of those cables behind the PC, the Air 740X. Also bought those dozers from the furniture place. They were pretty cheap, they were like $19 a pop. Used three of them to cover up the cables at the, behind the rig and under the desk. And then also used, brought the printer downstairs, used that to cover up some cables and the Logitech. Uh, surround sound 5.1 also wiring some uh, wires under the desk and using some clips to hammer them in so to keep the cables clean and out of sight so all in all the first part has just come along so well you guys are probably surprised because before it was just so messy but that's how I generally do things I'm just like look we've got to get the content done and then we'll get on to the pretty stuff later and so now we've got the pretty stuff we'll have to get back to the content Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also a big thank you to each and every one of you guys for watching the videos, supporting the channel, and a big thanks to the patrons as well. You guys know where that money's going. It's going all back into this studio, baby. And we're making this place look like a million bucks, and we're doing it on a budget, as we always do. Look at those budget builds. They get done on a budget as well, and they beat a lot of those computers that are like four or five times the price. Anyway, see you in another tech video very soon. Let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite part of today's video? And I'll probably try and bring a bit more of it back. Catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. And here it is, guys. Here is the rubbish pile so far. Just stacking up in this studio. All in all, the first part has just come along so well. I get... <laughs> also, I forgot to mention, I went down the place today to get more double-sided tape. And they said they closed at 7 p.m. And they actually closed, like, 5.30 on a budget, as we always do, baby, around here. We make those budget So now I'm editing out the video and I did watch the Bitwit video, the latest video, you guys are messaging me as well. And he did do what I hoped he wouldn't do and that was build the cheapest new PC possible and then compare it against literally the most expensive used PC. I have not heard someone paying that amount of money for a PC of those specs in the used price performance scene. And the only reason I'm making videos and responding to it is because it's misrepresenting used price performance and it's misrepresenting it by a long shot. So if you guys want, I can make another response video, but uh, why not? I mean, we can have a bit of fun, but I'll catch you in the next one anyway. Peace out for now. Bye.